Did a pulley play in this one? Uh, that is hard as shit to play. Christ. Uh, I said last week that I thought I was through this run of difficult solos that I've been on over the past uh, month or two. Whoops. I forgot about this one. I, uh, I thought it was higher up, and it should be higher up. Uh, that was obviously Randy Rhodes uh, and both solos to Mr. Crowley coming in at number 28 on Guitar World Magazine's Top 100 Solos of All Time. Uh, what can one say about Randy Rhodes that hasn't already been said? Uh, oh, I know. He was really bloody tiny. Uh, dude was like 5'7 and 105 pounds. That is one little powder keg of guitar explosiveness. Uh, I knew he was a small guy, but 105 pounds, that is a little fella. Uh, there's, uh, there's an old saying, the uh, star that burns twice as bright burns out twice as fast. And uh, sadly, we didn't even get that with Randy Rhodes. Uh, a couple of Quiet Riot Japanese imports where he was still developing his sound. And two albums in the span of about a year with Ozzy Osbourne. And, uh, and then he was gone. Uh, bloody tragic. Uh, of course, we all know the story. Buzzing the tour bus as a passenger in a small, light aircraft when shit went south and they clipped the bus and crashed. The end. Um... Dude hated flying, uh, was terrified of flying, and the, the bus driver of Ozzy's tour bus had an expired pilot's license and had commandeered a light aircraft one morning without permission uh, for a little morning joyriding in the sky. Uh, you know, coked out of his head and up all night partying, he, uh, he took to the skies and started buzzing the tour bus, uh, trying to freak the boys out inside, especially Ozzy. Uh, Randy wanted no part of this uh, shit, uh, but the band Seamstress, uh, an older woman, I think she was like 58 or 59, had a heart condition, but she wanted to go up. So a promise was made to her that there would be no antics and that they would just fly around for a little bit. And upon this condition, Randy agreed to join them. Uh, then this dick nozzle started making low passes at the tour bus again, and, uh, and the rest is history, I guess. Uh, you know what? Fuck that guy. Uh, you know, when I was a wee lad, nobody influenced my playing more than Randy Rhodes. 
Uh, Eddie Van Halen got me started when I was about 13 or 14, and Alex Lifeson and the boys from Iron Maiden, they got my chops up, but when I was ready to go and my fingers could really fly at about 17, 18 years old, it, it was Randy Rhodes pretty much nonstop for me for about two years. Uh, this is how I wanted to play. These were the scales I wanted to play, this is the style I wanted to play, this is how fast I wanted to play. Uh, he was the perfect guitar player as far as I was concerned at that age. Utterly brilliant. And, and then he was gone, you know. Uh, along with a hell of a lot of other people at, at the time, uh, I was devastated, uh, to say the least. I had lost my guitar hero, hell, my guitar teacher, uh, when I still had so much more to learn from him. And, uh, you know, who knows where life and guitar may have taken Randy Rhodes had he had a future in front of him. Uh, there are rumors that he was unhappy being a rock star in Ozzy's band and that his true passion lay in classical guitar. Uh, it was what he started on as a child, and the passion for classical guitar still burned in him even while he toured with Ozzy. Uh, word was that he wasn't much of a partier and shied away from the copious amount of drugs and alcohol always present in Ozzy's day-to-day uh, -day lifestyle. Uh, he would seek out classical guitar instruction in each new city that they played, and despite his already immense talent, he was more often to be found practicing his guitar, both electric and classical, rather than partying, uh, always trying to get better. And, uh, you know, most guitar players at this stage in the game would just stop, start enjoying the ride that success brings. Some a little too much, I suppose, but not Rhodes. His passion was his guitar. Had been since he was a child, and right up until his death, that passion still burned really bright in him to get better at what he was doing. Uh, maybe he would have made more albums with Ozzy, maybe not. Maybe he would have ditched rock and metal guitar altogether and pursued his love of classical guitar. Who knows? But uh, one thing is for sure, he would have continued to get better because he was obsessed with that. He was obsessed with getting better. Fame hadn't slowed down his desire to get better one bit, be it rock, metal, classical, we would have heard a hell of a lot more from Randy Rhodes were he not taken from us by some coked out dipshit bus driver, ex-pilot, uh, and rant. <laughs> it hurt when I was a kid. On to the solo. This is arguably Randy's best solo out of a hell of a lot to choose from. That said, uh, the outro solo to Revelation Mother Earth is one that gives it a good run for its money, in my opinion, amongst many, many others. Uh, Randy had spent countless hours composing the perfect solo to Mr. Crowley and finally settled on something that he was really happy with, only to have Ozzy walk in the studio one day and tell him that it was all crap. Uh, everything you're playing is crap, Ozzy said. Start over. Stop overthinking it. You know, play what comes naturally to you. Do what you do best. Just let it happen. And, uh, and that's what he did, and he put down this gem of a solo, and a real classic, and uh, one of the greatest guitar solos of all time, obviously, its inclusion on this list. Ozzy may not have been a guitar player, but he knew what worked, and what d didn't work. So we can thank him for that. Uh, actually, we can thank Ozzy and, Bob, and bassist Bob Daisley for letting Randy shine and cultivate the style that he's, he became so well known for. He was very restrained in his previous band, uh, Quiet Riot, and it was Ozzy and Daisley who encouraged Randy to add all the classical influences into his playing, something that he'd been reluctant to do previously with Quiet Riot. Uh, they knew that it would work, and boy, work it did. Uh, they knew they had something special in Rhodes, and they just needed to let him shine and do his thing, uh, do what came naturally to him, and, uh, you know, which was pure guitar magic and mastery. Uh, but uh, anyway, on my take on this solo, uh, like I said, uh, or maybe I didn't, I can't remember, uh, this shit's right in my wheelhouse. Uh, I studied and copied the hell out of Randy Rhodes when I was a teenager. Uh, however, that was sadly a long time ago. And then I quit guitar for 25 years, so there's that on top of it, I suppose. Uh, felt damn good to revisit my youth with this one, and, uh, and thankfully I can still play it. Uh, 
though I had to relearn every single last note of it, I completely forgotten it. That was 35 years ago. It wasn't easy. Uh, I'm old, or haven't you noticed? Uh, I should be jamming like dad rock or slow blues at my age, yet here I am ripping on blistering fast Randy Rhodes solos that had me enthralled when I was 18 years old. Uh, but these fingers, they still move, thankfully. Uh, like Randy was known to do in the studio, I double-tracked uh, both solos uh, for fullness and punch. And uh, do you know how difficult it is to manually double-track a solo this difficult and play it exactly the same way twice? That shit ain't easy, to say the least. Uh, but we got her done, and I'm happy with this one, very happy, uh, that I can still rip this very difficult solo at 55 and one-half years old. That pleases me to no end. Uh, as, uh, as usual, I recorded this with Bias FX. Uh, I just upgraded the Bias FX 2 Professional Edition, which is a lot of fun to play with. Uh, I didn't try to very hard to copy Randy's tone on this one, despite, uh, you know, his incredible talent. I was never really in love with his tone. So I went with a Mesa Boogie uh, dual rectifier setup with this one, and uh, I think it sounds pretty good overall. Uh, well, that's it. That's all I got to say about that one, I suppose. Uh, I hope you like it. It's, uh, it's been a tough week uh, nailing this one down, but here we are, ready to uh, move on to number 27 and a little Stevie Ray. Uh, we're getting there. A couple of more months. I think I'll be finished up this project. Uh, you guys take care of yourselves. Uh, hope all is well in your little guitar corner of the world. Thanks, as always, for uh, checking in and uh, checking out my progress. And uh, we'll see you next time. You guys take care of yourselves. Ciao.